Well, uh, after checking out of the external parts in episode 6, we thought it was time to show you the internal stuff. We've gotten a lot of questions about this stuff and uh, we're going to try to keep it short but interesting and explain how basic this setup is because this is supposed to be our backup engine but it proved reliable and due to some uh, lack of money we decided to run this and uh, this type of cheap setup we've been running for four years and uh, we've done some maintenance of course but nothing too major so uh, let's get rolling on episode 7 <laughs> First thing first, uh, I know I told you a little bit about it in the last episode, but to explain what kind of engine we're running, this is a Mercedes M104 engine. It's an inline six, it's 3.2 liter, and it's uh, from the like the 80s Mercedes, like the W124 estate and all of that stuff. It's uh, 24 valve uh, and uh, produces around 220 horsepower from uh, stock setup. So this particular engine that we chose was the 3.2 the engine code is the M104.992 uh, for those who are interested there's available 2.8, 3.0, 3.2 and also 3.6 that's an AMG version so this is a 3.2 it's a cheap engine around uh, maybe 750 euros uh, for a complete engine and uh, yeah that's pretty much it yeah, the first step that we're going to walk through is the head gasket uh, and then we're going to move over to the cylinder head and check out that, check that out. So uh, the gasket that we run on this car is a MLS gasket, it's a cometic one, uh, it's a three layer one and in this particular setup we're running a three millimeter gasket because that was actually the one they had in stock when it was uh, in a rush so we've been keeping running this usually we would run the stock one that's 1.6 millimeter i think so we're lowering lowering the compression a bit more with this than we like to but uh, now we have the uh, tune after it so we're going to continue with that um, the cylinder bolts uh, no the cylinder head bolts are rp uh, the kit that we're using is actually a custom one, but uh, I think the main studs are for a BMW M, M30 B35 BMW engine. So I think the bolts and the nuts are that, but uh, there's a special washer because the washer from the BMW engine doesn't fit into the holes of the cylinder head. So uh, multi layer steel gasket and uh, RP studs. Uh, combined with these uh, nuts then these are RP as well so this comes with the kit uh, so uh, then we we'll come to the cam camshafts uh, we're running the stock camshaft from the 3.2 liter so stock intake uh, uh, camshaft and stock uh, exhaust cam as well uh, stock bearing caps of course and we're still running the hydraulic lifters so uh, we don't rev higher than 7500 rpms due to this because we think they're a limiting factor we heard some people running as much as 8000 rpms but uh, we have yet to try we might try in the future if you know that they can do it please let us know we might try it and we always want some more revs of course uh, so yeah that's pretty much the camshaft setup let's head over and check out the cylinder head um, this is a stock 3.2 uh, cylinder head uh, we're running the if you look closer here the big uh, yeah, what's it called the big retainer uh, it's the same retainer that's in the 980 engine and the 992 and uh, this the good thing about this retainer and that valve type is that you can run the stock dual spring setup so this uh, retainer actually supports having two springs inside it from stock so you can just buy the original part number that spring put it in and then you have a little bit more of a spring rate which makes it easier to rev uh, before we actually added that spring we had a little bit of trouble of uh, 
hurting some of the lifters so that's a good upgrade if you have the big uh, the big retainers otherwise i would keep it at below 7000 if you could so uh, the valves hasn't even been uh, machined in this cylinder head this has gone about 220 thousand kilometers we haven't even refurbished this cylinder head when we put it in the car two years ago so the valve seats hasn't been uh, machined or anything we only cleaned off the cylinder head and uh, we also machined the surface to fit the MLS gasket but otherwise it's completely stock uh, we didn't even uh, hand grind them in it's just completely stock Works really good. The flow of the M104 engine has proven really good because the spool up of the turbo is a lot better than similar engines in stock condition. So yeah, it's a really basic setup. I think the problem now we have is that we're starting to get leakage around the valves. And the reason we got that is due to I always run on the rev limiter. And after a while we heard the valve uh, guide the bronze one i think it's called the valve guide it starts to get a bit uh, glitchy and that starts to hurt the sealing of the valve so that's the thing we're doing this winter we're refurbishing the cylinder head changing those valve guides and uh, making it uh, ready for next season so yeah uh, that's pretty much it for the cylinder head uh, let's uh, move over and check out the uh, bottom end of the engine so next part so let's move over to the uh, bottom end of the cylinder block this is one of the things we get the most questions about. I know I've been trying to get this product out for a long time. The reason is simply I don't have the time. And this setup is a support girdle that we built because we had a little bit of, little bit of a trouble that the cylinder blocks are cracking. Some of the people have been experienced that and uh, there's probably various reasons about that. Maybe a balancing issue when you're building a sheep engine without balancing all of the parts. But uh, we decided on running one and it's helped us with our reliability. So this is simply a six millimeter stainless steel plate. Um, then we have the uh, bolts going down right, right through the main caps of the uh, crank. So it's like a pin bolt going down all the way into the cylinder block and up above. And then we have, if you shake closer here, we've made a distance or a small cylinder here that takes up the gap between the face of the down face of the cylinder block all the way down to the main main bearing caps. Uh, these are our RP studs as well. They're really hard to find. We managed to find them. They're expensive. Also one of the parts why we maybe have waited a bit of doing the kit because we have to adapt to the stock uh, oil pump because all of the you guys almost run the stock oil pump. So I have to machine out this part and probably do quite some work to get this to work. Uh, hopefully I'll make time soon and I will uh, of course keep you posted when that happens. Uh, if you check this out this is the seal that we're using. This is actually uh, a bit special. Uh, this is kind of a, like a plastic uh, band or rubber band that you just simply put out that's uh, sticking to the surface. And uh, when you apply pressure to it, it actually seals up that it's supposed to be even uh, airtight. So um, it's a good and cheap way of sealing up the engine. And it's called uh, soft seal from uh, Specma seals, I think. So I'll try to show that some other time as well. Uh, so yeah, this actually binds together when you get the uh, oil pan on. It actually binds the whole engine together over the main cap and all of this. So this makes it really rigid and uh, supports the engine. 
I'm going to show you where the engine typically, typically starts to crack. And this is, if you check in front of here, above the crank, you have this small area. This is a bit uneven and also really thin here. So usually the crack starts either here or either there and then starts to spread out around the block. We had one block actually cracking quite a, quite a lot, but that actually we actually found out after having two years of really big problems with the dry sump system and oil pressure and all of that stuff, it actually ended up being a crack going over this main uh, oil uh, channel here. This is actually where the original oil pump feeds oil into the engine. So it was cracked here and when we put on the torque and the heat it actually expanded so we got all of the oil flushing out of here instead of building pressure inside the engine. So not the easiest thing to find. And the next thing about the M104992 is that these are equipped almost everyone with the oil nozzles. And so if you check down here you can see there's a machined area here. Where, where you can put the, I don't think you can see anything there. Uh, let's see if you can get some light on it. Let's see here. So you see there, down there is a machined hole and that's where this uh, fits. So this is actually just a small valve with a spring. At a certain oil pressure it opens up and uh, sprays oil out of here and on the downside of the pistons. And then this uh, will help the piston uh, stay a bit more cool and also lubricate the wrist pin. So uh, we choose to only run the blocks that has this because we think that's a really important part to get the engine to last for a lot of power because we're running 800 horsepower on the wheels and that's four times the original power. So it's not a bad thing to have. Uh, but I've seen a lot of people also running the 995 without them. So it's not a must, but we do it. So uh, that's about it for the support girdle and uh, that's other stuff in the block. So next step, we check out the pistons and also the rods. So let's go to moving on that. Also, one thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, this uh, main line, that's the feeder line for the oil pump stock. Uh, when we're running the dry sump system, I told you that we're blocking off the channel backwards. So that actually means that we're putting a plug in here that seals off this drain and it's kept down by the support girdle. This means that we can't get oil pressure coming out of that way when we're pushing the oil the backward way from the stock one. So uh, it's plugged here and we're getting oil pressure from the wrong way if you compare it to stock. And this makes this uh, channel get pressurized with oil, which actually feeds the chain tensioner that uh, controls the timing chain. So, side note, but I thought you should note. pistons and the rods. <laughs> Some people are, all people are almost surprised when I tell them that we're actually running the stock pistons. And when saying stock pistons, I don't only say that it's a stock piston with a freshly uh, cylinder and all of that stuff. It's actually the stock piston, 20, 220,000 kilometers and also no modifications on the piston so it's completely stock worn rings a bit but the reason we actually run the worn rings is that it creates a little bit more of a play in the rings which actually it can be quite a good thing when you're producing that much more heat and work to the engine than a stock one because this actually allows the play to be a bit more without pinching or cracking a ring or something like that so it's ridiculously a lot of power on stock pistons, but it works. 
Uh, as I told you on this setup, we have a little bit of a compression lowered by the head gasket, but uh, the main uh, compression lowering is made by the rods. So we actually changed to 144 millimeter rods in this one. Uh, they are forged, they're not the stock, uh, stock rods. Uh, people always ask me how much the original uh, uh, rods can take. And in my opinion, I say that 500 wheel horsepower is probably the max amount of horsepower I would run on one of the stock uh, rods. Uh, so this is a ZRP rod. It's actually from a BMW M, let's see here now, it's a S38B36 engine. So this is the M5 E34 engine with 3.6. They are 144 millimeters long instead of the stock one that's 145. This means that we're low in the, moving the piston down by one millimeter and therefore we get lower compression. Uh, the reason we took this rod is they're easy to get and the only modification you have to do is actually you have to take off a little bit of distance on the small end uh, of the rod to fit inside the piston because the BMW engine has a, a crank guided uh, rod and while the M104 engine actually uses a piston guided rod so uh, we have to narrow it a bit in the, in the top to fit inside the pistons. Um, and also a good reason to go over to these rods are that they use the BMW bearing from the S38B36 and also the BMW S14 engine, the one that sits in the BMW M3 E30. Uh, and this makes it possible for us to get a bit of a different bearing clearance because the Mercedes only offers one uh, option and this way we can run the ACL bearings and all of that stuff so in this we're running ACL bearing HX version that allows us a little bit more of a bearing clearance so these are about 700 of a millimeter in the in the, in bearing clearance I think uh, if I remember that correctly and also we have uh, the original stock bearings on the main for the cranks so we haven't even changed the bearings on the main crank because they look so good and we know the clearance has been working good on the other engines we run so stock bearings on the crank and we change the rod bearings only so uh, I hope you understand how stock this engine is and I'm blown away that this engine actually can run over 900 engine horsepower for two seasons in a drift car on the rev limiter and still not to break down. It's an impressive engine and I'm truly excited of trying to build another version of those two standing there. So we're going to try our best to get the funds of building a more potent M104 because I'm really stoked about this power setup and I love the sound, I love the torque and everything like that so hopefully we get the chance of developing this engine package because I'm really satisfied about it so um, well uh, also one thing to mention that's for the nerds maybe the 3.2 has 84 millimeters of stroke uh, and that's the crank we're running in this uh, the 2.8 has 76 millimeters, I think, and the 3.6 has 92.4 millimeters. So uh, we have a little bit of a special recipe coming up for the next engine, but uh, more on that soon. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was the quick details of our engine, uh, and uh, I think that's it. So hopefully you got answer to your questions. If not, give us a comment below and make sure you subscribe to the, this episode and thank you all for watching. Without you, we wouldn't put it be possible to continue. So uh, thank you for the support and see you soon.